My name is John Von Runzel. I am with Blue Microphones. Welcome to our booth here at CES 2019. This is a new microphone? Yes. So this is the Ember. So for those of you guys that are familiar with our studio microphones, uh, the last studio microphone that we came out with in our Essential series of mics is called the Spark. A baby brother to a Spark would be an Ember, so that's how it got its name. Um, the Ember is a $99 studio mic. Uh, it has a small diaphragm condenser capsule in it. Um, but unlike small diaphragm condensers, this one gives you an incredible full sound all the way from your 40 hertz up to 20 kilohertz. Um, it's perfect for voice, it has really nice proximity effects, so if you're a broadcaster or a streamer, get up on that mic and you're getting this amazing proximity effect that's gonna boost up and beef up your voice. For the uh, ASMR? Oh, I'm sure they'd love this, yeah. 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 But uh, so, it's good for all kinds of podcasting? Yes. But how does it compare with the Yeti, let's say? So the Yeti is a USB microphone. So I'm not going to say that an XLR mic or a USB mic is better than the other. It's all about your use case. So if you're using one single microphone and you want something that's just easy to plug straight into your computer without having other equipment, the USB mic is going to be great for that. Uh, if you want to use multiple microphones and you have an audio interface or a mixer that you could plug into, you're going to want to get an XLR microphone. And this is a great starting point for that. But uh, the shape is like a stick, right? And the, the Yeti is a... Uh, is, uh, that, that was a very genuine smile. The Yeti is a very, very, very famous uh, podcaster microphone, right? Yes. It's a totally different shape. Yes, yeah. So how can you describe the, the sound difference? Well, the, the shape isn't really going to affect the sound. So there's a lot more going on inside of a Yeti than there is inside of our Ember. So the Yeti has three microphone capsules inside of there. Plus, so that gives you the controls on the back to go from stereo to multi-pattern mono just by flipping a switch. You also have your analog to digital converters and all that stuff built into the microphone itself. So it's doing the analog to digital conversion inside the product. Uh, XLR microphone, like the Ember, is straight analog. So you don't have those conversions, uh, those computer chips and all that stuff doing all that stuff inside the mic. That's all done on, by separate devices. So that's going to be the biggest difference between those two mics. That's why the Ember has a three-prong connection, the Yeti has a USB connection. And here you have another small one you released uh, during the past year, right? What yes, is this? so this is the Yeti Nano. So the Yeti being the number one USB mic in the world, uh, we decided to come out with its baby brother. It's a smaller profile, it's still an amazing sounding microphone. Sound quality is phenomenal. Uh, it's just a couple less features than you find in the Yeti in a smaller form factor. Um, this is volume? Yeah, so this will be your volume, and it's also a mute switch, so you push this in, you can do a mute, it's got the LED indicator lights on there. Beautiful this. LED. And yeah. uh, over here, what does this do? This is your pattern selectors. So, you know, the Yeti, you got the four polar patterns, this one has two. This is your cardioid pattern. Push this button, it switches to omnidirectional. Cardioid means that it's going to pick up in front of the mic. Omnidirectional will pick up all around the microphone. Nice. So if you want to set it on a desk and record a conversation with a bunch of people at a table, you can do that. If it's just you talking into the mic, you put it in cardioid, get close to it, and it's going to reject the noise on the sides and the back. So if you jump over here. Uh, uh, this is the Yeti right here, and uh, you have all these colors. You said the world's best-selling USB mic? Yes. Mm -hmm. For sure. Absolutely, yeah. Big quantities. The number one selling wired condenser microphone. Yeah. Wired condenser microphone. Yes. What does it mean? So a condenser microphone that uses a wire. So there's wireless mics as well, but this is the number one selling USB microphone in the world. Yeah. And uh, where, how do you make the best sound? Where? What's the story here? So we have an incredible history in rebuilding and developing my, uh, studio microphones. So um, we st we got our start. About 25 years ago, rebuilding vintage studio microphones. Um, so we have two founders. There's uh, Skipper Wise, um, and he was a jazz recording artist, and he was known for having one of the largest mic collections in the world. The other founder was uh, Martin Salzprinz. He was uh, uh, the chief engineer at the Riga Academy of Music in Latvia. Uh, he was known for his rebuilds and modifications to vintage studio mics. And that's actually how those two got together. They were in a recording session. They Skipper brought some mics. That was right when digital recording first started hitting major studios. Uh, Martin's modded some of Skipper's mics to get him to sound better in a modern recording realm. And it became a thing in the audio industry to have your mics modded by these two guys. And then they eventually started developing their own microphones, which became the Blue brand. Um, 
You know, the studio mics is still our bread and butter that's still our heart and soul there. Um, the USB mics, uh, we started doing those about 11 years ago. The first USB mic that we made was the Snowball, which you may or may not have seen before. That was the world's first ever plug and, plug and play USB audio device, and that created the whole category of USB microphones. So when somebody thinks of USB mics, they more than likely think about Blue because we created that category. And uh, so when you create a USB mic, you need a little microcontroller in there, you need a, a firmware, you need some electronics to happen. Yes. That's a whole new section to master. You need yeah, to master it's basically like stuff. having an analog to digital and digital analog converters built into your product in the microphone itself. In the most recording studios, you're going to have that in, in a separate box called an audio interface. So um, we put it inside the microphone to make it easy to just plug your USB mic straight into your computer and you're off and running. So. And nobody else can match this kind of quality, you think? But there's other great USB mics out there. Um, I work for Blue, so I'm going to say Blue is the best. You know, But we, we make incredible sounding, amazing products. And this year you got acquired by uh, Logitech, yes. right? Mm -hmm. So is it going to help you be even cooler? Yeah, yeah. I mean, Logitech has an amazing amount of resources that we have access to now. Um, so and an incredible team of people that we help have access to as well. Sell even more. Yeah, that's the plan. Yeah, <laughs> and um, potentially get the even more R and D resources to do even more stuff. Yeah, Maybe. yeah. I mean, Blue. We've been a small company. We're less than 70 employees worldwide. So having access to a company that's you know, I think somewhere around 20 or 30 thousand employees worldwide. That's an incredible team of minds and power to have access to, and it should work out for the best for both of us. So. Cool. Yeah.